Hello everyone, welcome back to... Am I balding? My name's Allsace, and today we're looking at Los Luchadores. This is a show that, honest to God, makes me incredibly uncomfortable. Just look at this image. Notice the Spanish title splayed out on a logo that seems to be drawing from Angelo Saxon inspiration, accompanied by three white people, one of whom is way too old and far too muscular to be with the other two, all dressed as if they're out to see the midnight showing of Nacho Libre. And this guy's hair makes me mad because I know that I wanted mine to look like that when I was like six. Back when I had hair, that is. This is a Canadian-American tokusatsu that was produced around the early 2000s. It aired on Fox Kids from February 1st, 2001, and ran for about 16 episodes. And honestly, um, looking at all of the factors at play here, I can't see how this uh, wasn't uh, a, a smash hit. It's hard to imagine that the same people who produced uh, nearly all of the shows that we've talked about so far uh, also made this. I feel like this encapsulates the time in which it was made pretty well. It represents kind of like the end of Ameritoku being like the popular trendy thing almost, which is weird to say because Ultraman Tiga and Dragon Knight kinda came after this. But as we addressed in the Tiga video, that wasn't really all that much of a success. And Kamen Rider Dragon Knight is literally an outlier in every sense of that word. <laughs> this is the last live action show created by Saban Brands uh, before selling off Power Rangers as well as a bunch of other American tokusatsu properties over to Disney. It's kind of evident that at this point, tokusatsu was kind of like a trend that belonged to just the 90s. Don't get me wrong, I thoroughly believe that like the 2000s was sort of like the golden era for Power Rangers almost, but it's clear that around this time, no one else was really trying to copy the success of Power Rangers at this point. Los Luchadores is kind of a forgotten relic, I feel like. Whenever I see people bring up American Tokusatsu, I almost never see them talk about this show. But the thing is, this is just as much an American Tokusatsu as Mystic Knights or Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters is. So with all that being said, let's watch the first episode and try and keep in mind that this show is kind of representative of the end of an era. It's Saban's last hurrah. It's their last attempt at replicating the success of Power Rangers, and also their last attempt at adapting the tokusatsu formula for Western audiences for the rest of the decade. Hopefully, it lives up to what it needs to be and um, isn't as forgettable as everyone makes it seem to be. So the episode starts with this red guy getting his ass absolutely handed to him. While this evil guy starts talking in the crowd, the reason why I assume he's evil is because of the fact that he has a ponytail and a puppy. I, I mean, like, who else would bring a puppy to a wrestling match, really? I warned him about that move. He just doesn't listen, Laurent. I was not expecting that guy to sound like that. I thought this man was white toast, but it turns out I'm just a bigot. One of the guys pulls out one of these handshake buzzer prank things and smacks our main hero on the ass with it. I just find it hard to believe that that would work, to be honest with you. I don't really have a joke here, I just, I'm just more so questioning a lot of things, if I'm being honest with you. After an inspirational speech, the blue guy comes in and wrecks house on the guys that were beating the hell out of the red guy earlier. The evil guy, um, disappears or is like kidnapped or something, I don't really know yet. The intro plays and it kind of sounds like a high school Spanish class. Luchadores, the faceless heroes, Lucha Libre and Mascarados. And that's all I really have to say about that. Besides the fact that it also sounds very Saban in style, and I can't really tell you which part of that makes me dislike it more. It turns out the blue guy's name is Lobo Fuerte. Oh, oh, what was that? Oh, oh yes, I did. I did take three years of high school Spanish. Thanks for, thanks for noticing. The red guy is his apprentice named Turbine, which was a very cool name in the 2000s, I assume. Do you ever take off your mask? Never. A luchador's mask is like a, like a reflection of his soul. That shit has to stink. I imagine he has to have the worst forehead acne I, of any person 
ever. They get a call on their pagers. Well, incoming page. Signaling that there's an emergency. They meet up with this guy who I assume is like their commander or something. So why is this mule dude so importante? The show does this thing where they like to just throw in random Spanish words from time to time. And I'm kind of conflicted on that because on the one hand, I think it's really important for kids from Spanish speaking families to have a show where they can watch people speaking both Spanish and English and not be like othered, if that makes sense. I think that's really great and is probably much more important than the criticism that I have for this show. But on the other hand, it just feels really forced and uncomfortable. Look, I understand that I'm not really the authority on Hispanic or Latino culture, obviously, so maybe everything I have to say doesn't really matter, which is totally fine and understandable. But all I imagine when I hear this is a bunch of white men in suits jamming this type of stuff into the script, and I can't tell if I think that's a really good thing or a really bad thing. And that's all I'm gonna say on that, I guess. The commander shows them a picture of this dude with crazy eyes, and it turns out the ponytail puppy man was stolen by that guy. I could have sworn it wasn't supposed to be this way. He, he checked all the boxes on the... <laughs> you know what they say, uh, crazy eyes and broken legs beats puppy and ponytail any day of the week. I don't know where that sentence would be applicable in your own life, but I hope you take that one with you. You're going to give me legs. <laughs> so this dude with the puppy is a scientist, and the plan is to infuse crazy eyes with cheetah DNA so that he can walk again. Because cheetahs are the fastest animal on the planet. Yes! I got my groove back! And I, and I guess that fing I guess that fing worked. So in this next scene, Lobo and Turbine are seen in all black, which implies that they do sometimes change their masks, which means I kind of jumped the gun on my previous statement there. Prepare to see me tweet a screenshot from my notes app, apologizing for this later this week. Anyways, they break into the laboratory, but Crazy Eyes is able to run off because of the cheetah legs, of course. They also gave him lizard eyes, which uh, now makes things even worse. It cuts to the next day, Report says that all the DNA samples were taken from the freezer. Holy shit, that's where you got them from? Who left the cheetah piss in the fridge? They get a message from Crazy Eyes, and I guess they make a plan to free the people he kidnapped, but Big Homie injected them with ape DNA, making it nearly impossible to do that. He tries to steal the soul of Lobo Fuerte, uh, who has the heart of a wolf. They don't really explain why that's the case, or what exactly that does for Fuerte, uh, but I don't really care enough to really ask those questions, to be honest. Fuerte, I shit you not, uh, kicks a chair so hard that it causes a bunch of water to spill everywhere somehow, and that's how they're able to get the upper hand in the situation. They defeat the bad guy, and then they walk off in slow motion while the puppy from earlier gets possessed by like a demon or some shit. I don't like this, and I don't really think that's surprising to anyone, but I also don't hate it. The fight scenes were nice, and I feel like the injection of Spanish culture into the show is important for like the reasons that I touched on earlier, but I probably won't be watching more of it. I'm sure the show has its moments, but it kind of lacks that sort of 90s nostalgic feel that Saban's other American tokusatsus are sort of known for. It really is evident that this was kind of the end of an era, which is really sad because these shows are important to some people, and I really hate to see that sort of go away, you know what I mean? Also, Marcos here recommended that I'd watch Bible Man in the Ultraman Tiga episode of Not the Power Rangers. Do you think I'm a bitch, Marcos? Next month, we're watching Bible Man on Not the Power Rangers. Don't get too excited though, because as I said earlier, it only goes downhill from here. I hope to see you then. Bye bye.